everybody welcome back uh, we're gonna take a look at how to deal with volume calculating volume first of all um, volume is what we call a derived quantity it is derived from those seven basic units um, most of you are very very aware that volume is calculating the height times the length times the width or length times width times height but that's the way the picture is so um, and what does that have? How do we deal with that in the metric system? So the SI, the international system, the SI unit for volume is meters cubed. But if you think about it, that's a box, a meter long, a meter wide, and a meter high. That is a ginormous box. And so we don't typically measure volume in such a large amount. Um, so instead, we're going to use a smaller uh, unit, and that's centimeters cubed. So a centimeter long, a centimeter high, and a centimeter wide. That is definitely a, a smaller, more manageable unit. So calculating the volume of a cube, um, if you measure in centimeters, so again, taking that volume, the length times the width times the height, so it's four times four times four, which is 64, but then don't forget that you also have to multiply the units. So centimeters times centimeters times centimeters would be centimeters cubed. So uh, a volume of this cube in centimeters is 64 centimeters cubed. Another thing this also tells you is any unit that you look at that's cubed is going to be a unit of volume, right? So again, uh, oftentimes in our problem solving classes, we need to be able to recognize what our units mean. When we see that G unit, we know that's mass. When we see centimeters cubed, we know that's volume. When I see uh, grams over centimeters cubed, I know that's density. All right, so there you go. Converting volume. So consider this questions. How many meters cubed is a box that is four centimeters on all sides? Okay, so as we've already seen how to solve this, we're going to uh, take our four centimeters and we're going to do a conversion. So we have the conversion between centimeters and meters. Um, so again, uh, we're going to put that 100, well, first of all, you write what's given, four centimeters. You're going to convert from centimeters to meters because you want to find out what it, this what this amount would be in meters. Um, and then you add in your, your numbers, 101. And so that means that four centimeters is equivalent to 0 0.040 meters. So then we can take that because then all of the sides would be that same number and multiply those together by three. So 0 0.040 meters times 0 0.040 meters times 0 0.040 meters. And we would get 6.4 times 10 to the minus five meters cubed. All right, cool. All right, we're gonna start with calculating density. So units of density. Now, typically if we are dealing with solid material, the units for density would be grams per centimeters cubed. Or if we're dealing with liquids, that's when you're going to see that grams per milliliter. All right. This is a very important little conversion factor. If you have not already highlighted this in your notes, um, please go ahead and uh, I would recommend highlighting it. One milliliter is equivalent to one centimeter cubed. So it makes it very easy to convert between milliliters and centimeters cubed. Okay, so we have a 10 gram sample or 10 gram mass of sulfur is found to have a volume of 4.83 milliliters and it says calculate the density. So for this particular problem, first of all, here's where I begin. Calculate the density. Well, what do I know about density? I know density equals mass divided by volume. So is there any information in this problem about mass? Well, we can look here. So again, here's that idea of if I recognize that grams is a unit of mass, I should be able to come out here and go, okay, the mass is 10 grams. And 
it tells me that we have a volume. So volume is 4.83 milliliters. So I've been given a mass, I've been given a volume, I can then go ahead and plug it into this equation. So I have 10.0 grams divided by 4.83 milliliters. Notice grams and milliliters is not going to cancel. When units don't cancel, they carry. So that means that our, my final unit is gonna be grams divided by milliliters and then 10 divided by 4.83, let's go ahead and just use this. Now, notice again that when we put this into the calculator, the calculator gives us a bunch of numbers. Do we keep them all? The answer is it depends on the measurements. We're doing division, and division means I look at the significant figures of the measurements, so 10, 0.0, three significant figures, 4.83, three significant figures. So my final answer, I'm gonna go one, two, three, that zero is not gonna change anything. And I'm going to go ahead and box out that final answer, 2.07 grams per milliliter, again. All right, so let's look at these example calculations. So when we look at these, it'll ask you things to do with density, like what is the density or the mass or the volume or things like that. And we are aware that any of these questions, when you calculate with density, can be answered using the formula density equals mass over volume. And then you can rearrange the formula, plug in numbers, and get answers. And although that is in theory possible, for the purposes of this course, this is forbidden and this formula should never be used in your work. The reason why is because d equals m over v, in many cases, becomes a magic box that students plug numbers into and get an answer, and they have no idea why the answer is right. They have no idea why they got the number they got. It just becomes the magic box that spits out the right answer, and that's not what we're looking for. We want students to understand why the answer is right and why the numbers are producing the answer that it produces. Therefore, for your work, rather than this, you need to show us how you made the units give the desired units of your answer. Now, don't expect this to be given to you on the test, of course, but for the sake of practice, this is given so that you can calculate it and then see if you're right. So let's talk about how you go through this if this were a test question. If you are seeing this on a test, the first thing to know is that it's saying, what is the density? And you know that density is either grams per cubic centimeter, or if it's a liquid, grams per milliliter because grams per cubic centimeters for solids. So you should know density refers to one of these two. Now, in this case, since this would not be visible on a test, you would have grams and you'd have cubic centimeters. And so in the absence of instructions otherwise, you assume your answer would be involved grams per cubic centimeter. Now look, if you're going to get units of grams per cubic centimeter, it should make sense that you are getting this by, look, it says divide grams by cubic centimeters. The unit tells you what to do. If the units of density are grams per cubic centimeter, it tells you to take grams divided by cubic centimeters. So there's your grams and there's your cubic centimeters. So if you do this, you will get density. So what you do is you set up your units first. You have centimeters, you have grams. So if we take grams divided by centimeters, we get the right units, and that's what we're looking for. Remember, don't use this, don't write this anywhere on your paper. All right, so what you do then is you plug in the numbers after you have verified that it will give the units that you want. So this is where you start. Units doing something gives the units that you want. After that, you can plug in the numbers. So gram is associated with this number, so you put this number next to gram, 549.7. And then centimeters cubed is associated with this number, so 475.98. Once you've done that, you'll do your calculation and you'll get something. 549.7 divided by 475.98. Uh, oops, that's in scientific notation mode. Let's put that in regular mode. There we go. So you'll get 1.154888, la la la, all that stuff. Make sure you don't fall into the temptation of just writing whatever number is there. 
Make sure you round correctly for significant figures, noting that there are four sig figs here, four sig figs here. So you got around to one, two, three, four sig figs. So this four is next to an eight, it becomes a five. And that's why you get this for your answer. 1.155 grams per cubic centimeter. Box your answer, of course. All right, so that's how you go about this. Set up the units, plug in numbers, and then solve. So... We can do that here too. It says, what is the mass of an object with volume of 9.35 centimeters and a density of 2.847 grams per cubic centimeter? So again, you wouldn't see this on the test, but we give it to you for convenience's sake. Um, mass, you should know mass is in general, unless otherwise specified, going to be grams. You should know that. Mass is grams. Grams is mass. Um, if it doesn't tell you what is the mass in grams, You'll just look through, you'll notice, oh, look, there's a grams right here. So assume you know grams is a mass unit. So just assume your answer will be using the units given. If it asks for mass unit and you see grams, use grams. If it asks for mass unit, gives no instructions, and gives kilograms, then fine, give kilograms, whatever. So that said, um, you need to figure out how to make these units give grams. So you got centimeters cubed and, oops, let's make that clear. And you got grams per cubic centimeter. So you got to figure out a way to make these give grams for an answer. Now, luckily, this is actually pretty easy because look, if you take centimeters cubed and times it by grams per cubic centimeter, cubic centimeter cancels cubic centimeter and you have grams for an answer. Oh, that is so perfect. We can totally use that. So we're going to do that. Cubic centimeters times grams per cubic centimeter equals grams. So how does that look? We have cubic centimeters is attached to this number 9.35. So we put that right here. And then grams per cubic centimeter is attached to this right here. Notice the 2.847 is next to grams. Make sure it goes next to grams. So there you go. I put 2.847 grams. What goes on the bottom? When you, when you see centimeters on the bottom by itself, that's an implied number one. So basically it's just an automatic number one goes where there's no specified number. So what it's telling us is we take this times this divided by this. And then when you do it on the calculator, you get 9.35 times 2.8, uh, oh, can't even type right, 847 equals that number. Now what you'll notice, again, you get a whole bunch of numbers on here. Round correctly. Three sig figs, four sig figs. Make sure you got three sig figs your answer. That's where this came from because the six is next to a one. So that's why it just 26.6. .6. Okay, the process you're seeing here is called unit analysis. Using the units to figure out how things cancel so that you get what you want. I, again, I know you can do this with equals MRV, but don't you dare even try. We want to see you understand how to cancel units and how these units interact with each other to give the correct units and the correct quantity and indirectly the correct number. So make sure you show us how you figured out the way units cancel so that we can see your process. All right, that said, let's move on. The volume of an object. Okay, it doesn't specify what volume unit it wants. So we're just gonna go with, oh, there's a volume unit. So we're just gonna go with cubic centimeters because it's there and that's a volume unit and there's no other volume units mentioned. Um, so how do we, we need to figure out how we're gonna get cubic centimeters. And somehow we need to get grams per cubic centimeter and gram to give this because we have grams unit and we have grams per cubic centimeter now problem is if we do this we don't get cubic centimeter we get grams squared per cubic centimeter because grams times grams is gram squared and then cubic centimeters on the bottom and nothing cancels it so this is not a volume this doesn't work so wait how do we deal with that then um and the answer is, well, what can you, yeah, well, the answer is a few things, but um, you can try dividing stuff, which is true. And that actually will be kind of what's going to get us this. So what I mean by dividing stuff, here's what I mean. What if instead of grams times this, we did grams divided by grams per cubic centimeter? Turns out if you divide by something, it's the same as just, this is the same thing as grams times 
centimeter cubed per gram. As in, if you flip the fraction upside down, if you divide by a fraction, it's the same as timesing by the fraction flipped upside down. You can do that. You can flip the fraction upside down. That's a wonderful property of math. And look if we could do that. If we could put the centimeters cubed on bottom and grams on, or sorry, centimeters cubed on top, grams on bottom. If we can flip the fraction, now gram can cancel gram and give cubic centimeters, which is exactly what we want. All right, so yes, you can flip a unit upside down and times it by the upside down unit. There is a catch that goes with that, though. So again, gram cancels gram to give cubic centimeters because we flipped this so that now cubic centimeters is on top, grams on bottom, and then gram cancels grams. Notice what's going to happen when we put the numbers in. So that's what we do with the units. Now let's do the numbers. Gram has the number 938 associated with it. So 938 grams times cubic centimeters per gram equals cubic centimeters. You see, this is the gram and cubic centimeters. See, this is the this is it up here. Notice how 3.75 is associated with it. Earlier, I pointed out with the other example, here it is, that this 2.847 is associated with the grams, not the cubic centimeters. So it goes with the grams because it's next to the grams. The same is true here. 3.75 grams for every one cubic centimeter is what this is saying. One cubic centimeter has a mass of 3.75 grams. So what's saying, that number's got to stick next to the grams. So the 3.75 goes down here next to the grams, and you just put an implied one right there. Because, and I didn't mention this before, but it is true, a density tells you what the mass of one cubic centimeter is. So one cubic centimeter is a mass of 3.75 grams. So one cubic centimeter is a mass of 3.75 grams. There you have it. So if you're going to flip the units, you got to flip the number two is another way of phrasing this message. So what it's now is telling us to do is the math is saying, take this number, multiply it by one, divide it by 3.75. So let's do that. 938 divided by 3.75, because after all, times in by one doesn't do anything, gives 250 point blah, 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 all that. Now notice... 938 is 3 sig figs, and so is 3.75. That's the reason why you got a round of 3 sig figs here. So there's your first significant figure, the 2 right there. That's your second sig fig, the number 5. Your third sig fig is this number 0. 0 is next to a 1, so it doesn't round up. That's why it just stays a 0. Now, if you do this, that's not 3 sig figs. That's just 2. Adding the decimal makes it 3 significant figures, and then you can box your answer. All right, so that's why we do it that way. And that's why the answer had that decimal in it. Next, what is the volume of a cube with a density of 2.87 grams per cubic centimeter and 816 milligrams is the mass? Okay, it doesn't specify what unit, so we're just going to give the volume unit that we're given. So we're going to use cubic centimeters for the answer. And you've got to figure out how to get cubic centimeters out of this. So what are your units? You have grams per cubic centimeter and you have milligrams. If you just times those, you're getting gram times milligram per cubic centimeter, and that is not the answer we're looking for. So that's bad. So what do you do? Well, you got to flip the units again. Look, you want cubic centimeter in your answer? That means you better flip this to put cubic centimeter on top and gram on the bottom. So if you have cubic centimeters per gram times milligram, you're getting closer, but now you have cubic centimeter times milligram over gram. These don't cancel. That's not good. What do you do? Well, you're going to have to convert. You can either convert this to milligrams, that way milligram can cancel milligram and leave cubic centimeter for your answer, or you can convert this to grams, that way gram cancels gram and leave cubic centimeters for your answer. It doesn't matter which you do. So we'll just convert this to grams, why not? 816 milligrams times, and we'll put milligrams on bottom so it cancels, and grams on top equals a certain number of grams. Uh, milli means one one thousand, so that means if you're going to convert, you're going to need to put a thousand in this conversion factor somewhere. Remember, the big number goes next to the smaller unit, and a one one thousandth of a gram is much smaller than a gram. So the big number goes next to this unit, which is the smaller unit. 
and I'll put an automatic one on top. So this divided by this equals, and the answer comes up to 0 0.816 grams. So now if we do that, we have grams, 0 0.816 grams, and we have grams per cubic centimeter. So if we take cubic centimeters, well, let me go back a sec. If we take grams per cubic centimeter and grams is our starting, and then we flip this upside down so that cubic centimeters is on top and grams is on the bottom, we now have cubic centimeters per gram times gram equals cubic centimeters because gram cancels gram and we're good. So let's do that. And I'll find some space on here, maybe here, okay. Mm, and by the way, it doesn't matter which one you do first. If grams times this would have given the exact same answer as this times grams, so whatever, it's all good. Um, so cubic centimeters per gram. Remember, 2.87 grams per cubic centimeter, so 2.87 grams, and then per one cubic centimeter. Make sure that this number stays next to the proper unit of gram. And we're going to multiply that by, what was the number again? 0 0.816 grams. 0 0.816 grams. Again, if I'd have done 0 0.816 times this, same answer. It doesn't matter. Because gram cancels gram to leave cubic centimeter for your answer. And uh, 0 0.284 cubic centimeters to be more precise. All right, so that's the thought process of how we get there. Again, rounded to three sig figs because of three sig figs and three sig figs. But that's the thought process of how we get there. Watch your units. They got to cancel. So if you avoid the calculation or the equation D equals, oops, equals M over V. Yeah, don't use this because when people do use that, they oftentimes don't catch that this unit doesn't match this one and therefore we'll get a wrong answer. All right. Onward. What is the density in grams per cubic centimeter of an object which is that size and that mass? Notice, this mass doesn't match this, so we're going to have to convert this to grams. This is not cubic centimeters, this is just centimeters. So we're going to have to get cubic centimeters out of this. So let's start with the fact that, okay, cubic centimeters is going to come out of this. Remember, volume is side times side times side. So that means 4.0 centimeters times 7.0 centimeters times 10.0 centimeters equals uh, 280 cubic centimeters because centimeter times centimeter times centimeter equals centimeter cubed. So, okay. Now, uh, I should say two sig figs, two sig figs, three sig figs. So technically, this is fine as a two sig fig number. Um, that said, we're going to wait till the end to round before we do any final rounding. Um, so that's your cubic centimeters. Now, 8.56 kilograms, that needs to be in grams. So we're going to multiply it by something that gives grams. And that means you want grams on top, so you get grams in your answer. You want kilograms on bottom, so that kilograms cancel kilograms. And then you just got to put in the right number here. So a uh, kilo means a thousand, so the number thousand goes in here. Remember, the big number goes next to the small unit. A gram is smaller than a thousand grams. So this is the smaller of the two units, so put the big number next to the small unit, and then put an automatic one next to the other one, and then 8.56 times 1,000 is 8,560 grams. So this is the units that we need in order to make this happen. Now, it's asking for density. That means density equals grams per cubic centimeter. So you need to take grams divided by cubic centimeters in order to get your correct units of gram per cubic centimeter. So let's do that. Let's take our grams, 8,560 grams divided by our cubic centimeters, 280 cubic centimeters. And when we do that on the calculator, 8,560 divided by 280 gives that mess. And remember, Look at the numbers you started with. By the way, yes, you look at these numbers up here. Two sig figs, two sig figs, three sig figs, three sig figs. You better round to two sig figs. That means your first sig fig is a three. The second is this zero. However, it's next to a five, so zero turns into a one. That's why it's 31. Grams per cubic centimeter. All right, that's how you go about it.